Hi everyone, Eric from Dumb Game Dev, and today we're going to be looking at Playmaker Actions for Text Mesh Pro, which is an amazing asset that's been released f for free for Unity, and it really changes the whole text game when it comes to Unity. So there's really no reason not to be using this, especially if you're already using Playmaker. Now you've got some actions to use with it, and the fact that it's free, it's really where um, Unity is moving as far as text goes, and I, I have heard things that it might be released in the next Unity version as part of it, so we'll see what happens there. Now I'd like to point out that this action set was funded through my Patreon account, and if you're not sure what that is, it's people fund a couple of dollars a month to help pay for the creation of new Playmaker action sets, and so I'd like to point that out to you guys if you want to jump over there and also put in a few dollars a month, you can help fund some more Playmaker action sets. Now, I won't spend too much time talking about it, but this set was specifically funded by three people, and you can find it here in the README file, so go check that out. Now, to get this action set for now, you're going to have to get it from my GitHub account, and if you haven't done that before, it's no problem. I'm going to teach you how to do it now, and in the future, hopefully, it'll be part of the Playmaker ecosystem. But for now, use the link in this Playmaker, sorry, in this YouTube description file over to my GitHub account and it'll bring you to this page that you see here. Now, don't be confused if you don't know what any of this is. You can read the README file if you'd like. It's got some details here, the license information, which it's under a, a LGPL license as well as MIT, which means you can use it for free in your game without any worries. You don't have to um, put anything in the credits saying that you use this or where you got it. You don't need to do any of that, so you can just use it in your game straight up. And uh, yeah, so let's just show you how to download it. All you need to do is just click this um, clone or download. Yours will probably just say download since you're not logged in. And you just want to download to a zip. Now you're going to download the zip file and unzip it. And then just drop that straight into your assets folder in Unity. So all you need to do is just drag and drop it into your main assets. And it will make its own folder and it will be called most likely um, this one here text mesh pro underscore playmaker dash master now you can rename this folder whatever you want it to be it doesn't have to be under this specific name it really doesn't matter playmaker is going to pick it up no matter how you have it named so that's a good thing here so once you have that done make sure that you have also text mesh pro installed from the asset store so you can find it just by searching it in the store and then importing it into your scene Okay, so let's get started. Now I'm just going to show you a couple of the basics, how to use this asset, uh, uh, and how to use my actions. Now one cool thing about this asset is it does have a whole bunch of demo scenes, and I'm not going to go through them, but I would really suggest that you do. It's under the examples folder, and uh, you will find a bunch of different scenes here, and you can see all the different cool ways to set this up, and it's far more than I could possibly show you in this video, so I'm just going to show you the basic text. Now. If we look at the basic text that Unity comes with <clears throat> by right-clicking here and then just choosing, I had to make sure that's a right-click, that's a right-click, right-click there and then choose 3D object and if you choose 3D text, this is the text that Unity has come with and you'll see what it looks like on the screen and it's not exactly uh, good looking. Now you can try and resize this a bit to try and sharpen things up but it ends up sort of looking like crap to be blunt no matter what you do. And this is the actual game view, it's not even the scene view. Okay. So now once you have Text Mesh Pro installed, if you right click here and you choose 3D objects, you'll have a Text Mesh Pro text. And if you drop this in, you'll see a huge difference right off the bat. Now I already have some a couple settings on mine, but not much. So let's just go to the scene and I'm going to move this over. And I can resize this down here. So they're a fairly similar size, so you can have a look. And if you're not already using Text Mesh Pro, this should really show you why you should be using it. Like, look at the difference here; is is a huge difference. Okay. And with Text Mesh Pro in the inspector here on the right hand side, I'm going to drag mine over a little bit. Actually, let's just throw it in the middle so you can see it better. With Text Text Mesh Pro, it comes with all kinds of different settings that you can play around with. And just trying to drag this down here. There we go. 
Um, so beyond the normal rec transform stuff and the, and the mesh transform, you have the input box here. You can change the input here, what it says. It has all kinds of font settings, which are pretty awesome. Different kinds of alignments and everything like that. You can um, import more materials and have different presets for those materials. Then it also comes with its own set of shaders. Okay, if you're not super familiar with shaders, that's fine. But I would check out the demos so you can see all the different shaders. Now, one little caveat about the actions are there's a couple issues with the mobile shader still, so we're still working that out. So if you're playing around with this for the first time, I would suggest you just set this to the Text Mesh Pro and then choose Distance Field Overlay and not use the mobile Distance Field Overlay. Just choose the regular Text Mesh Pro Distance Field Overlay. So that's the one we've got set up in this tutorial, okay? So I'll drag this back. Now, let's look at using Playmaker to make some changes on this. And I already have the underlay set to something, so I'm just going to set that back to nothing. So this is what it would look like out of the box. So if you choose Playmaker, and I'm just going to choose Text Mesh Pro and add an FSM right on it, we can do pretty simple stuff just by choosing our Actions Browsers. And then it will be under three different sections here. And I'm not sure if you can see this. Let me just move it over to the main screen again. So in the Actions Browser, we will have, let's see here, we have Text Mesh Pro Advanced, Text Mesh Pro Basic, and Text Mesh Pro Shader. So I put them into three categories to help them separate out for a bit for you. So that the basics are the ones you probably use the most. The advanced are, well, more about spacing and things like that. And then the shaders are just all the shader controls. So these ones are a little more complicated, but uh, super helpful. Okay, so I'll put this back. Now let's just change the text and just start from there. So we can just grab um, Text Mesh Pro Basic. And you could even just search it by doing a text mesh. You don't have to type pro and then just type like the words text and you'll see all the text. I guess the text mesh pro has the word text in it, so that doesn't work. But let's see here, text mesh pro basic text. So we can add this into our action and it's red because it needs something. So we can change this one just to say hello world as well. And we don't need to set every frame. We just want to change it once and that's good enough. So let's click play. And you can see the text has already changed. And look at the huge difference between these two. Now let's add a little bit more. So once that's done, I'm going to add a finish state. We'll call the first state like change text. And then once this is finished, we'll have a go to another state. And in the second state, let's um, let's do a color change. So we can just do a simple color change. It's under basic, text mesh pro, text color. I'll throw that in there. And uh, maybe we'll just change the text to be like a red or something so we can see it easy. We click play. And there we go. Now we can also uh, maybe we want to use a button to change, for example, the color of the text or a mouse or something. I'm just going to use a button down because I, I like using button down or key down. So let's just get key down. So get key down is the action I'm using. And let's put it at the bottom. And I'll just set it to my tab key. And so when I hit tab, I'll make a new event called tab down. So now whenever I click tab, it will go to the next state, which I'll make over here. And you know what? Actually, I'm not going to do that. Let's do this. We've got a color. We've got a key down. Let's start with, um, let's make it white. I'm going to show you why. So now if we just take this state we made called color change, copy it, and paste it, now we've got two states that are the same. Let's link them up to each other. And in the second state, we'll change it to be red. So what happens now is we flow into this first state, and it changes it to white. And it looks like there's no change. It's changed it to white. But what this does is just sets us up for a 
sort of back and forth between these two states, okay? So let's push play and we'll see how that works. Okay, so now we're in the second state already of color change, and if I click tab, as you can see it changes by going into the third state, and I click tab and it goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. So if I had set this first state to be red, then it would automatically flow in here and look red right away, which is not what we want. We want it to look white first off. So that's why I've done it this way. Now we can also use, let's look at some of the shader controls. So, oh, I deleted that. And my action browser, I'm just going to go down to Text Mesh Pro Shaders and hopefully you can see this. Let's do a simple one. Let's just do a um, outline. So again, I'm going to throw it into the first state here, the first color change state. Call this, uh, add the outline in here. I'll just drag this up so we can see it easier. And let's add it at the beginning before the key down. And say I don't want any outline at the beginning, so you can see down here the thickness is already set to zero, so no outline is going to show up, and it's not enabled on this shader. So on the next state, let's also put the outline, drag it to the top, and I'm going to enable the outline shader, and let me just change it to blue, and we need some thickness here. Now you could type the thickness in here, but I suggest you use the drag bars when they're there. It will show you the minimum and maximum, so 0 to 1 is how thick this goes, and so you could type like 99 in here, but it would just actually go to 1. So these uh, slider bars sort of give you an idea of what would be an acceptable range to TextMesh Pro. There we go. I have to take my mouse out. And um, I'm not going to do any of the speed or the tiling or anything else, so let's just set this to like 0.1 and uh, hit play and see what happens. So now we're into that first color change state, we push tab, and we go into the next one, you can see that it has the outline on it here per our shader, and if we hit tab it will go back. Now one quirky thing to note about shaders in general is that Whatever you change in the shader, even during runtime, you can see the outline here in the shader. It actually stays. So for example, if we look at the underlay, let's change the underlay to um, normal. And let's just give it some offset and uh, whatever else. And unclick play, you can see that the underlay is still there. So whatever you change on the shader, even during runtime, is going to stay afterwards. So what this means for the actual actions is if we don't have an action to reset it, it will stay after. So for example, let's, um, why don't we just delete all these? Can't delete start, okay, no problem. Okay, so for example, we will turn the outline color back to white, turn off the underlay. Okay, so now we're sort of back to normal, right? And we want to use uh, Playmaker to change the outline color. So we go to the Actions Browser, we choose Set Text Mesh Pro Shader Properties Outline, we throw it on here. And let's say we want to make the outline red. We enable it, and we give it a little bit of thickness, okay? So now you can see the outline is set to white before we play, right? And we click, click play, and it goes to a red outline like we wanted it to, but when we unstop the game, or go back, it stayed red. So these shaders take a property and then keep it there after the runtime. So you need to make sure that you always reset it back to what you want it to be, so, you know, the best way to do that is just to have two states, or the easiest way. So I just copied and pasted this, so we have the same state. And always in the first state, set what you want as the default, so we just wanted it to be white. 
and it have zero thickness. So that, let's see here. No, we didn't actually set any. Um, <laughs> let's change this back to white. Thickness zero. I actually actually forgot to add a key down, so nothing will change. Key down. Key is going to be um, tab is good for me. Let's use this finished event. Finished. Let's copy this over to the next state so that we can go back. Guess I can't paste it in there, so let's go here. Paste action after. Okay. That should do it. So you have to play around with this, but if you hit tab now, and go back. Now when you turn this off it'll be white. And even if it's not, it's red like this, the next time you start the game it will turn itself back to white as you can see. So you need to set your default into the actual state itself. Otherwise, especially when you're testing things out, you may end up with the um, it looking like this. So that's a little um, I wouldn't call it a bug necessarily, but that's just the way that shaders work for now. So, Anyways, there's all kinds of settings here that you can use on the shaders. There's actions for pretty much all of them. Again, the mobile is a little quirky, so if you find some mobile issue problems, go ahead and leave me a message and I'll try and fix that for you. But as far as everything else goes, all these font settings are changeable. Uh, all the alignments, all the UVs, everything like that can be used in these actions that um, can change everything in text mesh pro hopefully everything's well documented enough for you here when you hover over things should tell you what it does uh, you probably can't see that let's just bring this down so it, it should say what it does set text mesh pro font and you should be able to see change, you can change the font here or the font size the font style the text the text alignment and the text color. So hopefully, like I said, pretty straightforward as far as it more or less matches exactly what it says here on the inspector. So if you're trying to find something, you can go and look here and set it that way. Okay. So that's it for Eric here, me, myself at Dumb Game Dev. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, just leave me a message in the uh, YouTube comment section or if you're on the Playmaker forum, leave me a question.